Hallman was, uh, was filled with a bunch of unusual and interesting characters who were doing somewhat suspicious research into all kinds of uh, high altitude phenomenon. And uh, I believe that the Air Force brass saw it as basically a compound full of a bunch of cowboys. Um, and uh, consequently, some of the most interesting research of that day was done out there in the Mexico Desert. It was a golden age in the Air Force. I was just fortunate that I was on the ground floor uh, and had the opportunity to, to work with some wonderful people. Uh, the, the, probably the, the greatest man I worked with was a fellow by the name of Dr. John Paul Stapp. He was the visionary in the Air Force when it came to space research. And I was very fortunate that I was on his team. Stapp understood long before most in the Air Force that mankind was in fact going to go into outer space. And he knew that one of the big problems they were going to have to solve was how do you keep astronauts properly restrained and safe during the period of deceleration? If you're traveling at thousands of miles per hour in Earth orbit and hit Earth's atmosphere and slow down very, very quickly to a few hundred miles per hour, it's something akin to slamming into a brick wall. It just seemed to him a little too dangerous to put anyone else in the seat of this rocket sled. And besides, as he would say many years later, he would prefer to kill himself rather than uh, kill some young captain and then uh, go through a court martial. I knew some humans I could have used, but they wouldn't let me. <laughs> you just have to stand in awe of the courage of the man. They strapped him into that sled and nobody knew what was going to happen. There were people who said, John Paul, you go for this ride, you're going to die. The Air Force's official book on the topic of deceleration was that a human being could survive about eight times negative gravity in a sudden stop. And Stapp understood that that was not going to be sufficient for astronauts in uh, spaceship uh, re-entry. So what Stapp did was climb aboard this soapbox racer and have himself propelled faster and faster down this track um, to hit a water brake system at the end and slammed him to a stop in literally less than a second. I took my first ride on the 10th of December 1947 with uh, about two rockets, so it was about 135 miles an hour. The 10 Gs uh, at a very low rate of onset. He continued to push the limit and finally found that he was able to handle more than minus 46 Gs in the massive deceleration he pulled on his final rocket sled run. At 40 Gs, you weigh 200 pounds, that's like 8,000 pounds pulling out on you like that. Colonel Stapp was uh, strapped into the sleds very securely with, uh, with seat belts, shoulder restraints, and then the helmet was even strapped down to hold it in place so that he wouldn't break his neck when they stopped. If you can imagine what those kinds of deceleration forces are gonna do to a human body. Stapp lost fillings in his teeth, ruptured his eardrums, hemorrhages in his eyes, broke wrists, broke ribs. It was a, a punishing regimen, but he kept doing it over and over and propelling himself faster and faster down this track. Time and again, Stapp would drive his beloved Cadillac out to the track, ready to be strapped in for yet another early morning run. An assistant would park Stapp's caddy at the far end of the track, next to the base ambulance, thus ensuring that whatever happened, his ride would be waiting. Well, finally he got to the point where his superior officers told him, look, this is just about enough. We're going to give you one more shot at this, and then we're going to pull the plug on your project. So on his final rocket sled run in 1954, John Paul Stapp had nine rocket engines in the back of his rocket sled and shot himself down this track at speeds in excess of 600 miles per hour, literally faster than a 45 caliber bullet, and then slammed to a stop in less than a second. And on that final run, uh, as his support crew ran out to see what they were going to find at the end of this track, Stapp was uh, slumped over. They helped him from the rocket sled, helped him into the ambulance, took him to the hospital where he was examined by some very concerned doctors. His eyes had hemorrhaged very badly, and in fact, he was unable to see. Within a couple of weeks, his vision had resolved, but uh, for the rest of his life, he would always have a slight shadow in the corner of his eye that he could attribute to this final rocket sled run. John Paul Stapp was the first, last, and only human being to ride the high-speed rocket sleds of Holloman. These days, NASA and the Holloman High Speed Test Track are working to develop what may well become the next generation of launch vehicles. 
Yeah, we have a uh, magnetically levitated test track that we are building now. It's like a perpetual motion machine. People tell me that it's a quantum physics effect, which means it's magic to me. We've been working quite a bit with NASA. They're interested in it for a proposed uh, space launch assist type system. But long before NASA existed, Dr. Stapp and his Holloman team were already sending manned spacecraft above the atmosphere, using aviation technology as old as America itself. 